cataractcoach.com. Small pupil case becomes tough. The iris prolapses through the paracentesis. You know it's going to be a tough case. Let's watch this case together. Now, making an incision here looks like a paracentesis, but being made with the keratome. And now going in with, let's see, maybe some DSS or some epinephrine. Now, tripan blue dye going inside the eye. And now, let me tell you about the Cataract Coach Podcast. Top podcast on all of ophthalmology. It will teach you to be a more successful ophthalmologist. I promise you will love it everywhere where you find your podcast. Now, here we go. Got some viscolasic inside the eye. Now using cystome, getting a rexus created here. Very nicely done. Oh, I'm doing a lot of it here, but oh, it looks kind of small. Remember, not a great dilation here. That looks like a little bit of a baby rexus, at least to my eyes. To me, this looks like at best a four millimeter rexus, which I need a lot more than that. So I don't like the baby rexus here. It's going to make your life tougher. But if that's your technique, that's okay too. So again, creating that rexus, finishing it all with a cystome alone, that's a great technique. Good hands there. Very nicely done. But again, that's the baby rex. That may be even three and a half millimeters. Here comes the main incision with the keratome. Okay. There you go. Going inside there. And now let's see. I'm making a para on the other side. I like to use a smaller blade to make the para. I know some surgeons want to minimize the you know, use of instruments here and will use the same keratome and only go in part way to make the para. But the problem is it's too wide of a paracentesis. Now, going inside here with BSS, trying to do some hydro dissection there. Again, hard to see. Look, the pupil came down. If this is not your forte, you may want to consider putting in iris hooks or a pupil expansion ring. This can be otherwise very difficult. So now, okay, look at that pupil. It's mad now. Now that pupil came down even small. That's three millimeters. This is going to make it tough. So in a case like this, you got to ask yourself, do you really want to suffer? So going in with the phaco probe, here's the chopper. Now the pupil did expand a little bit more. And surgeon's obviously very skilled. Nice technique here, rotating it around. But look at the floppiness of the iris as well. This may be a floppy iris case. A case like this, I would do a large rexus, five to five and a half millimeters, and I would prolapse the nucleus partially through the capsular bag, opening the rexus, and also partially into the anterior chamber, being held by the pupil. And that'd give me a large pupil and be able to get the whole nucleus out with easy access. Now, this is a definitely a Flomax type of case or floppy iris syndrome, IFIS case, whatever you want to call it. Faco probe is, looks good, taking out the nuclear pieces, good chop technique. But again, look at the iris. It's prolapsing through the para. So again, my encouragement to you is to don't, you know, use a special blade. Use a side port blade, an MVR type blade, a 15 degree blade, some smaller degree blade, smaller size blade to make the paras. Otherwise, they leak too much. Look at that chopper now through the paras there on the bottom of your screen. There's a ton of iris prolapse. It's the paras and is just way too big here. So it's going to make life challenging. Now the surgeon is going to power through and finish up the case here. Obviously, great dexterity here, able to open up the pupil by lifting it with the chopper. Now going with a Simcoe cannula through that uh, extra side port. Again, yeah, this is, this is good. I mean, you're cleaning everything up. The patient's going to have a nice outcome, but you can see there's already some sub-incisional iris damage there. Not under the phaco incision, but rather underneath the paracentesis incision. And I think that issue is that the paracentesis was just too big. It was too big for that chopper. It kept prolapsing, and look, it's gotten damaged. Now, what should you do here? You can just finish up the case and call it a day and put the lens in the bag. The patient have a nice outcome. And then if the patient is symptomatic from, let's say, a ghost image or an extra image coming through that iris defect, that's a relatively easy and small defect that you can close or suture up with a 10-0 um, uh, polypropylene suture. Could you also suture that iris defect now? Yeah, for sure. But again, my encouragement to you is use a smaller incision next time for the paracentesis. I like your Simcoe cannula here. That's fine. Uh, you may want to consider, you're already using a phaco probe. Why not just use a bimanual IA through tiny paracentesis? You'll have a lot easier time. Or keep your paracentesis incision small and use the Simcoe through the main incision. That works too. But I think you really want to upgrade to a bimanual IA setup here and smaller pairs and DCs. You'll have a nicer outcome here. And if the case looks pretty good, cleaning up the rest of the cortex, let's get the lens in the bag. And again, that, there's that iris defect. You're going to definitely see it. Now, what do you do if you're a surgeon and you see this patient with an iris defect in the first eye that was done elsewhere, and now you're doing the second eye? You give the other surgeon the benefit of the doubt. So you can see here in this case, you can't blame the surgeon for everything. This patient has a lot of issues with the tissue. 
Bad tissue, bad iris prolapse, bad floppy iris, a lot of Flomax type issues, IFIS. Here comes the lens going in the capsule bag under viscoelastic. That looks pretty good. Make sure it's completely in the bag, especially these small pupil cases. Finish up this case call today. Again, I just finished the case at this point. Don't touch the iris. If you need to, you can always come back in a couple months and do a suture there to close that iris defect. Patient is going to be happy. Beautiful case. Thank you for sharing it. Remember, check out our Cataract Coach podcast, the top podcast all of ophthalmology. It'll teach you to be more successful.